Section 126 is interesting because it's directed specifically to Brigham Young. And as we know, Brigham Young is this crucial force in the church. He becomes the second president, second prophet after the martyrdom of Joseph Smith. And many of us think of Brigham as this great American Moses, who liked the Moses in the time of the children of Israel, leading them through the desert to the promised land. You have this American Moses, Brigham Young, who leads the saints through the desert to the promised land. And we see him as a, a city builder, a pioneer, the Lion of the Lord. All those things are true. What we may miss is that after he was baptized in April of 1832, the first nine years of his time in the church was primarily focused on serving missions. We may often miss that Brigham Young was a great missionary. In fact, his original identity as a member of the church was as a missionary. So let me just share with you the number of missions that he served before this revelation was received, and you'll start to see why this revelation is so significant for Brigham. And I just find it a very tender revelation for how God knows his servants individually and their needs. So here's some of the missions that Brigham Young served. He's baptized April of 1832. According to the records, he's off serving a mission that summer, preaching to others what he's learned. Later in December of 1832, he goes to Canada. Uh, he does a mission in 1833 to New York, another mission to New York and New England in 1835, another mission in 1836 to New York and New England. Obviously, those people needed a lot of help from Brigham Young. Then in 1840, we know that he is one of the key leaders on the mission to Britain that does so much good, that does so much good to bring six to 8,000 converts into the church and to strengthen the church after the difficulties that we've been seeing in Kirtland and Missouri. And he's gone for a year. He gets back, and he's been away from his family for quite some time, and we get this beautiful revelation, and I just love how it begins. Now, this first, it sounds like the words of Joseph Smith. It says, Dear and well-beloved brother Brigham Young, verily thus saith the Lord unto you. Now here's what the Lord says directly to Brigham Young. My servant, Brigham, it is no more required at your hand to leave your family as in times past, for your offering is acceptable to me. I have seen your labor and toil in journeyings for my name. I therefore command you to, spend, to send my word abroad. Don't send your body abroad. You've done that a lot. Now it's time just to send my word and take especial care of your family from this time henceforth and forever. Amen. Now, I haven't done the research on this, but I wonder, it's my sense that Brigham Young never served another mission after that in the typical sense of serving a mission. Definitely, he served in many, many ways, but it'd be interesting to look up that, look that up further if he served any missions after this point, or if he actually fulfilled the command from God to make sure he was there for his family after he had served so many missions, anywhere from six to nine missions before this revelation was received. Now, let me share a few words from Brigham himself about the experience of heading off on a mission to Britain under very difficult circumstances. Here's what he said. You might recall that many of the 12 went and they were under health problems, financial straits. And he said, we started from home without purse or script. Basically, they didn't have a wallet. They had no money. And most of the 12 were sick. And those who were not sick when they started were sick on the way to Ohio. Brother Taylor, that's Brother John Taylor, was left to die by the roadside by old Father Coltrane, though he did not die. I was not able to walk to the river, not so far as across this block, no, not more than half as far. I had to be helped to the river in order to get into a boat to cross it. That was about our situation. I had not even an overcoat. I took a small quilt from the trundle bed, and that served for my overcoat. While I was traveling to the state of New York, when I had a coarse satinette overcoat given to me, thus we went to England, to a strange land, to sojourn among strangers. So I just love the tenderness from the Lord, that he, he knows Brigham Young, and he knows all the toil, the labor, the sacrifice that Brigham has done on behalf of the Lord and on behalf of the Lord's children. God knows you. He knows of your toils, your labors. 
And if you listen to his voice, you will also hear him telling you the things that will uplift your soul and give you peace in times of trouble. It's beautiful. And many of you will remember seeing some of the church-produced videos of Brigham Young embarking on that mission when he leaves his family in the, the grand shout, hurrah for Israel, as they, as they leave under those difficult circumstances.